you were to build a full drive with only a 10k budget, then what would be the first mod you'd do? My answers definitely changed over the years and with this new build, I'm going straight for a set of Harrop lockers. These days, a lot of cars come out factory with a rear or sometimes front and rear locker, but if you don't have any on your rig, then this is easily the best value for capability on a full drive. I have previously installed front lockers on two of my patrols and both times it completely transformed how good it was off-road. So it was an easy call for this build to whack these straight in. To get the lockers in, we gotta pull the diff centers out and to do that, we have to pull the axle shafts as they are splined into the diff. Once the shafts are out, we can go ahead and drop the centers out of the car. Proudly supported by Superior Engineering, Diesel Conversions Australia, and in part by. So we've got the two diffs sitting on the bench here. Now that's the most labor intensive part of doing lockers on a car. But uh, if you're not too sure or not too confident working on a diff, if you can get it to this part, you're really gonna save some money if you can take the diffs like exactly like this, load them up in your car, take them to someone who can put the locker in, you're gonna save a ton of money because this is sort of the labor intensive part is getting this out. Now e lockers stands for electronical locker. That's not the right word, but electric locker. So it uses 12 volt to magnetize a coil and that is right here, so this is the part that we're putting in, but it uses 12 volt to magnetize this and lock the uh, diff together so that both wheels are gonna turn at the same speed and at the same time. Yeah, I'll start getting some measurements in and we'll start disassembling it and I'll walk you guys through how I put a locker into a patrol. So the first thing is we're gonna check backlash. Now, it's probably the most important thing to check. It's the measurement between the crown wheel and the pinion gear, because if you can imagine two gears like this, we can slide them in and out with our bearings. We can actually walk the whole crown wheel over and bring it back. Now, if that measurement's not right and you have too much play, you're gonna get really loud noises and really poor teeth meshing, and it's gonna be really weak. You want the teeth to grab at the strongest point, which is right in the center. Basically, if it's set right, it's gonna be the strongest point of contact between the two gears. So that's kind of what we are aiming for. So you definitely need to have a dial indicator. I've got it set up just on the face of one of the gears on this crown wheel. And what we need to do is rock it back and forth and take that measurement there. It's also gonna tell us how worn out this diff is. Now that car's got 440,000K, so I'm assuming there's gonna be a little bit of wear on this, uh, but this will kind of tell us how much. Nearly half a million Ks on this patrol and it's expectedly showing a little bit of wear. I've got a reading of 0.30 millimeters and the factory specs are between 15 and 20. So I'd say that the carrier bearings are just a little bit worn. With the Harrop kit, we are upgrading the carrier bearings to a larger bearing anyway, so once we're all done, we can set this back to a factory spec. All right, so we are left with a nice crown wheel. Now, you've got to go through and clean up all these threads with um, degreaser or brake cleaner. Just make sure that it's nice and clean because we do need to re-loctite this onto the Harrop locker. So I'm going to go out and degrease this, give it a wash off and uh, bring it back inside. All right, I've got this all nice and clean. I've blown out every hole that I can. And I've also cleaned up all the bolts and made sure that there is no oil residue on this because we need to use red Loctite on these so they don't come out. Now it is actually time to bolt this crown wheel to the new Harrop E-Locker. Now what you want to do is you want to make sure this is dead flat. If there's any burrs or anything, you need to file them off. I've gone around this with my finger and I can't feel any high spots or any burrs, so we are good to fit it. The same goes for the center here. You want to make sure all those bolt holes are nice and flat 
and there's no burrs or scores or anything in that. So I'm gonna put this together. We need to torque this to spec, but first I'm just gonna use a gun, whiz it all up, get it nice and square. Then we're gonna go through and torque it all up. You certainly don't need a special tool set to do these. A dial indicator is sort of a special tool, but you can get them very cheap these days. Mine is from eBay and it seems to work fine. The rest of the tools are just basic hand tools. I mean, you need some Loctite and a breaker bar. That's pretty much about it. It's honestly a great project for anyone who is mechanically minded to give it a crack. It's sort of technical, but I'm just taking my time, making sure everything is tight and installed correctly. Right, now with these bearings, you do need to press it on down further than flush. So you do need to get like a punch and just punch it down the rest of the way. And just make sure it's sitting nice and flat on the e-locker itself. So the e-locker is ready to be put back in the housing. And what we need to do is figure out where we need to drill the hole. Now it does need to go at the top of the diff so the oil is not constantly sitting on the hole. So we need to make sure that we're drilling at the top of the diff. We also need to make sure that the diff is somewhat in the right position because there's not too much length on this wire. So what I'll do is I'll sit it in. I'll do kind of like a dry fit up and get it as close as I can just with my hands. We'll mark a hole where we need to drill and then we'll go ahead and pop a hole, refit that, and then we'll have a locker. Right, so I've got it just sitting in there and you can see there's hardly any backlash, meaning that we've got the ring gear just about in the right spot. Now, what you wanna do is get your wires and figure out exactly where they need to go. I'm thinking that right here, I'm gonna drill a hole. I can't remember what the size is, but I'll quickly look that up. I'm actually gonna take this out to drill it. And I'm gonna flip the housing upside down just so all the swarf comes out of it. And I'm also gonna grease my drill bit as well, but I'm gonna get that hole drilled now. I actually just forgot to hit record, but I've drilled the hole. It's right there, if you can see that and it is an 11 and a half mil hole. Now I am at the stage where I can actually fit this center up into the housing again and get it back to the factory specs that we had before. So I'm gonna tinker around, it's gonna take me a while. Last time I think I honestly spent about an hour, maybe an hour and a half just getting these settings right. I was definitely being a little bit pedantic last time, but the last thing you wanna do is go back in and pull this thing out. It's a lot of work to do that. So I wanna make sure it is right the first time. So I'm gonna triple check all my measurements and yeah, hopefully we get it right, but it's time to finally fit the center up. Bloody oath, we finally got this thing dialed in. Now I'm gonna rock this back and forth and you'll see that it is within spec. It has to be 0.15 to 0.20 and we are getting right on probably 0.15, 6, something like that. So we're on the tighter end, which is fine. Basically what I did is I went ahead and set the preload. Then I actually started walking the diff over until I had the backlash right. Once the backlash was right, it was actually on the larger end. And then when I talked it up, it went down to the tighter end, but it's still well within spec. So I'm stoked with that. We are back together on the first one. So I've got a few more things to chuck on and this diff is actually done. I don't have any marking compound, but normally you'd put marking compound on and run the diff round and make sure that it's biting into the gears properly. Obviously we've still got the front one to do. So I'll chuck you guys on a time lapse and bowl that one over now that I've shown you how to do this one get that one done, then we can whack them in the car. Then we've got to wire it up and I've also got a bit of a surprise coming with the wiring, which is kind of cool and I'm pretty excited about it. So I'll get that one done. I'll see you guys in a sec.
It's actually the next day. I managed to break one of the parts here. As you can see, this collar here is now broken. It shouldn't be in two pieces. And that collar goes in here and adjusts your bearing preload. So it's quite important to have that not as a two piece feed. I put an Instagram post up saying that I stuffed it. And uh, one of you guys reached out and said that they had a spare 411 center. So I flogged the parts out of this one and it got me back on the road. So massive shout out to that bloke for helping out. Now, the only thing really left to do is to just put the plug on and then these centers will be right to put back up into the patrol, which is going to be a bit of a mission. But what I'll do is sit them on this roller and I'll roll them under and then just try to bench press them up into the housing. And as for all this, I won't be rebuilding any of it because I'd say someone done it not too long ago, like the grease in there looks really good. The grease in the CV looks good. The wheel bearings look fine. I've been through all of it and I'm quite happy to just put it all back together. So I'll start getting these diffs back in. It's gonna take a while just to get it all back together, but uh, it's gonna save some time not rebuilding any of this and also save some money, which we can spend elsewhere. Right, now the lockers are in, everything is back together and we are just about at the stage where we can start wiring this up, but we can't forget to fill this up with oil. Now, obviously we've gone twin lock for this, which means that we've removed the LSD from the rear diff. Now, normally I run an LSD full synthetic oil, but uh, it says on the internet, and I could be wrong about this, so in the comments below, correct me if I am wrong, but the internet says go back to like a basic ADW90 and the internet is never wrong, guys. So. Um, but yeah, if I am wrong, correct me. So I'm gonna go front and rear with uh, the same oil. Now, a little hack that I figured out all on my own was never throw away these things. I actually keep a whole heap of them up on my um, bench there. And these little things, they fit on the Castrol bottle here and they fit on lots of others. So I get to go under now and just squeeze that into the diff until it comes out the fill hole. Idiot. Right, we are all oiled up, and I don't mean me, you filthy bugger. I mean the GQ has oil in the diffs. Now we need to move on to the wiring. Now I know wiring scares a lot of people, but uh, this couldn't be a simpler installation. We basically just need to mount a relay, mount a switch, and we will have a locker. We just need to run these wires here down to the locker itself, and it's as simple as that. Now right here, we have a center console for a GQ. Now I've actually had this for a very long time. It was originally sent out for coal and it's from One Stop Shop 4x4. I actually don't think he's making these anymore, um, but he sent this out to me a few years ago. Now, I promised him I would use it in a build and here we are. We're gonna chuck it in. Now, as you can see, there is a switch panel right here with a whole heap of switches. So what we can do is take two of them out and we can use two of them for the locker. And this thing in this uh, GQ is gonna be a little bit fancy. I never thought that I would actually outgrow this box because it's 54 inch and it's 600 deep. Like it is a bloody big toolbox, but we have this thing fully loaded up with tools now. So I did actually have to expand the fleet and we went and picked this one up off eBay. It was like 200 bucks and it is just purely for wires. So the benefit to this is I can just pull it out, drag it over here. Then you can just open the door Diesel's gonna jump up. Up, you can get up. Diesel will literally just wait like that until I lift him up. Come on, up you get. There you go, good boy. Now, back to the toolbox. Uh, the good thing is, is that I can pull it up right beside where I'm working and we literally have everything that we need for wiring. I've got pliers and I've got my multimeter and testing stuff and plugs and crimp connectors and we've got wires and stuff down below. You guys know that I really like shed stuff and just staying organized in the shed is just one thing that just helps me work. So I really like little things like this. I thought some of you guys might like the idea. Anyway, let's get into wiring up this locker. There's one thing Diesel loves. It's a bloody dirty old GQ. Hey Diesel, he just sits in this thing for hours. He's a good boy. Diesel is. Diesel's a good boy. One thing I've learnt with wiring is to start by laying it all out on the table. Figure out what needs to go where, then install it into the car. For these lockers, it couldn't be easier. Red wire to the battery, blue to ignition, and black to an earth. Then we have our two wires heading down to each locker. I've mounted everything under the center console as it's super convenient to get to if anything were to go wrong, and it's up off the floor in case we go through some crossings. Oh, how good does that look?
All right, everything is wired up and I've got the center console in. This thing looks so good in here. We've got the big cup holders. We've got USB power right there. We've also got our front and rear lockers. Now, I had a 50-50 chance of which way they were gonna go and I stuffed it up. So we've got rear at the front and front at the back. So it is what it is. I can change them around later. I'm absolutely loving how that looks in here. It just makes the whole interior feel so much better. And I really love the fact that I've got some big cup holders now. Everything is wired up. It goes right under there through the dash and into the engine bay. We've just got our cluster of wires here. Now I've left a little bit of extra length on them just in case we get a big flexi boy lift. We need that extra length so the wires don't pull out of the diff. The only thing left to do is to test them. Now I'm gonna whack you guys on a tripod and uh, see if we can sort of imitate it with the wheels off. Then we can whack the wheels back on later. And uh, yeah, twin locked on the old GQ. $3,000 rig has $3,000 worth of lockers in it. That's bloody pretty funny actually. The first test will be unlocked. I've got both hubs locked in and I am spinning this side and I can see the drive shaft spinning but the other side is not moving at all. Front locker in. Let's see if she locks up. Yeah boy, <laughs> look at that. Front locker spinning up. You can feel it. I just felt it engage and have a go at that. Yes. All right, locker is on. You can see I'm turning both of those over now. Also turning the gearbox so it's a little bit hard. But yeah, you can see those both turning. Both lockers are working. Right, they are both working, which is mint. Now we've got twin Harrop e-lockers. I wanna quickly say massive shout out to Harrop for sending these out. They have always sort of looked after us on the channel. And it's awesome that we get to work with these guys again because I bloody love their lockers. Right, that is actually going to be it for this episode, guys. We are now twin locked on the uh, budget GQ. Might not be that budget anymore, but uh, anyway, we're gonna run with it. I really ideally would have liked to take it out and test the lockers in this episode, but the uh, GQ is not registered yet. So need to wait until we get some plates on it, then we can actually take it out. And I do really, really want to take it out in its stock form or like as stock as it is now with the 31s and the twin lockers. I think it would be really fun to just go out in a little beater and hit the tracks in uh, the GQ. If you have any video ideas, let me know in the comments below because I'm always looking for ideas. But uh, yeah, we're twin locked now, thanks to Harrop. Can't believe this old girl is now twin locked. She just needs a bit of a birthday and she'll be an absolute rig. So I'll catch you guys on the next episode where hopefully we're doing something funner than being in the shed, but uh, we've got to do the shed content to get to the fun. So let's get through it and then we'll get out there. I'm so tired, I'm gonna go inside. Have a good evening or morning, whatever it is for you right now. I'll see you on the next episode, goodbye. Ha <laughs> ha